Thank you for joining our KCF spring webinar series. Uh, I'm Cassie Foltz and I'll be helping to moderate our questions for today. So our second session, Optimizing Blower Efficiency, will be presented by Dr. Koopman, uh, co-founder of KCF Technologies. And after his presentation, there will be some time for questions. So if you'd like to submit one, please send it to me via the chat on the right. Thank you for joining us and thanks for presenting, Dr. Koopman. We're excited to get started. Uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, blower efficiency and uh, how you can save some substantial money by investing in our new technology. But first, uh, a few words about myself and our company. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer with expertise in vibration, acoustics, design optimization. Uh, Jeremy Frank and I started the company in 2000 and uh, Dr. Leverage joined us in 2006. He's our CTO. Jeremy is our CEO, and KCF was created after a model uh, developed that I developed while director of Penn State's Center for Acoustics and Vibration. And we discovered by linking engineers from industry with those developing new technologies at the university and other places that common solutions evolve that benefit both. Our uh, KCF's yearly summit conferences are designed with that philosophy in mind. So companies embracing our KCF uh, latest technologies end up with a competitive edge. And, and also those companies are critical in providing ideas for our engineers to maintain their lead in providing cutting edge technologies that address uh, industries changing needs. Our company uh, is, our main offices are in State College PA. It is a rapidly growing com technology company of 220 plus employees with regional offices in Detroit, Michigan, and Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, KCF's mission is to optimize American manufacturing, solving problems that no one else within the I I IoT world uh, will. Uh, our wireless sensors and smart diagnostics software offer real-time continuous monitoring to give machines a voice. We, you can probably hear that a lot on our website. We give the machines a voice. And our service teams partner with customers to, to elevate workers. We have a mantra within KCF using smarts, grit, and drive at every step. And with continuous innovation to bring the latest technologies to life to make these work and live smarter. Here's some facts about blowers and pumps. And this always astounds me. Uh, Four trillion kilowatts hours a year. That's our U.S. consumption. And of that, 32% of that is consumed by the uh, by industry. And with that industry, about a fourth of that is consumed by blowers and pumps. And that is about a third of a trillion kilowatt hours. So the potential savings is always amazes me is how much uh, one can think about in terms of achieving energy and independence within the US uh, by just improving efficiency by a few percent. Uh, six of those industries uh, represent 84% of the potential for industrial blower and pump energy savings. The chemical, paper manufacturing, uh, coal products, mining, food manufacturing, primary manufacturing, primary, primary metal manufacturing. So optimizing the operation of these blowers and pumps achieve electricity savings ranging from, say, 20 to well over 50%. But even modest improvements in blower efficiency can resu result in thousands of dollars of annual energy cost savings. So the question is, is your fan or blower running efficiently? Do you know? Only continuous monitoring provides real-time data that helps them optimize performance and thus reducing energy costs, extending life of the motor, blower unit, and providing safer working environments. So here are some typical problems affecting a blower efficiency. If the blower is improperly installed, you can have loose bolts, misalignment of belts, a coupling, you get excessive vibration and noise. Of course, that increases bearing temperature, increases wear and tear, and ultimately leading to failure. So here, here's a bad, here's an example of a bad uh, fix for a installation. Uh, don't do this. Um, Reduced blower performance is caused also by discharge pressure due to dust buildup on blades, damaged blades, or a fan running at lower speeds than design. So here's an example of a 
a damaged blade. You can see uh, if you didn't know the blade was in that condition, your energy or your efficiency of the blower would be pretty much decreased. Other problems are faulty position of dampers that result in reduced flow, uh, leading to an inefficient operation. Loose dampers can also lead to excessive vibration. Um, low suction pressure is a sign of restriction in the inlet air ducts due to dirt, plug strainers, or faulty louver vein positions. And misalignment between belts and pulleys accelerate wear. And this is really a very common problem we see, we see a lot. Uh, and the with improper belt tension as well leads to vibration and lowers fan blower performance. And then finally, all of these conditions lead to reduced blower mo motor capacity, uh, causing equipment trips that lead to blower shutdowns, reduced throughput and related in environmental issues. So quick uh, look at the difference between fans and blowers. And a lot of these are used, these names are used interchangeably a lot fan or blower, but if you look at the specific ratio, the discharge pressure over the suction pressure of these fans and blowers, we can see that the uh, the specific ratio is about 10 to 20 percent for fans and blowers. That in, the, the pressure is increasing about 20 percent, where the compressors are much higher, say 1 to 20. Uh, the two fans, or the, the blower and fan we'll be looking at today is a centrifugal fan where the flow is coming on the inlet side and discharge on this side. And we have several different blade or impeller designs, the radials for say dirty contaminants within the airflow, uh, forward curved veins or backward curved. And the here we have the corresponding efficiency for the backward curved inclined and the forward curved. Notice that the, the backward curved airfoil is, is the most efficient between the 80 and 83 percent. The uh, forward curved is at least efficient, 60 to 65 percent. For the axle fan, we have the tube axials, vein axials, and propellers. And again, here's the corresponding efficiency. The vein axial is, is highest because we have veins built in that keep the air from swirling and that's going to increase its efficiency. Whereas in the propeller, there's no veins, so the propeller efficiency is pretty low, 45 to 50%. Uh, let's spend a little time on this curve because uh, it, it kind of indicates how we proceed once we understand uh, if there's a problem. So when your fan or blower is delivered, you'll get a curve. Let's call this fan curve here. So at high pressures, um, on this side we have pressures, so at high pressures, you have low airflow. As you go down the fan curve, you in lower, reduce the pressure, but you increase the airflow. You also have something called a system curve. And this is when you're designing for a fan, this is something you need to know or figure out. But the system curve looks like this generally. And so where it intersects the fan curve is what we call the best efficiency point, the BEP of the fan curve. And that's where you want to be operating to have your fan to be the most efficient. Now, if you turn on a, uh, if you restrict the airflow with a damper, you essentially design a new curve, system curve, it looks like this. And here's your new operating condition because we want to reduce the flow to Q2, but notice the pressure increases significantly. And so this is probably not a good idea if, if if you have a choice and in, in, in during while you're preparing for a new fan or blower, it's probably best to go with a variable speed drive because for the variable speed drive, uh, we would come up with a new fan curve at this particular speed. And now when we look at the intersection of the original system curve with the, the new speed, uh, we achieve our lower flow rate, but at a much lower pressure. And thus, we can conclude that reducing the speed from N1 to N2 keeps the damper fully, keeping the damper fully open. And we see a much more efficient method to decrease airflow. Less power is required and less energy is consumed. So that's the, the basis for the best efficiency point, the point at which we want to operate. 
So um, here's how KCF's technology can reduce your energy bills and extend the life of your blower. Here's what its typical kit looks like. We have two probes and two pressure sensors. These go in the inlet and discharge side of the fan. They connect with wires to the sensor board, and this then transmits to the base station. Here's a typical setup uh, on a blower. Uh, the pressure transducer and the temperature sensor are located, or they kind of located in a T, so we just have one port of entry uh, on the inlet and discharge side. And these are just put in at the right places, connected to the sensor boards, transmits to the base station, and back to your tablet or computer. So you, you will be able to see what the condition, operating condition is. Now, a brief word about the isentropic efficiency of the blower. Here's how we compute the uh, corresponding efficiency. Uh, if we know the temperature differences between the inlet discharge and the, uh, sorry, temperature and the pressure ratio here, and we need to know K, and K is the ratio of specific heat of air. And we'll see from this graph of the air temperature versus K, and here we have the relative humidity. You can see that the value for K is not changing very much from like 0.19 to uh, 139 to 140. So this is a weak condition. And so we normally would set this at uh, a ratio of 1.4 to do our calculations. Uh, so, yeah. So the uh, we can also compute the blower efficiency using the volume flow rate. Uh, but as we know from experience, it's really hard to measure the volume flow rate on site. It takes a lot of pressure transducers and a lot of averaging, and it's really very complicated. Whereas if we use our isentropic efficiency measurement here, along with measuring the power going into the, into the motor, uh, we can compute the volume, the CFM of the flow. So now you can check to see if, you're, if you have a fan curve, if you are in fact achieving the right volume flow for your conditions. Here's what you see on KCF's dashboard board on your tablet, laptop, or computer. So this is plotted against time on days. And here we can see the, um, let's, let's look at the red first. That's the temperature gradient in degrees. And here it's about 46, 47 degrees Celsius. The yellow is the pressure in PSI. That's usually lower. That's about four or five uh, PSI here. And then we look at the blower efficiency. And then in this case, it's pretty low. It's point, point three, point three, about 33%, which is not good. Uh, and I'm gonna show you why it wasn't good. So here's an installation of the a K, KCF efficiency kit on an industrial blower. It's just at 500 horsepower uh, running at 3581 RPM. So we're, we've installed our kits, uh, the, the, the sensors on the inlet and discharge side. And we're also, by the way, we're developing a new technology where, where, where possible we would measure the surface of the, uh, the ducting itself rather than putting a probe inside. So it would be a complete surface measurement for both the, um, the pressure and the uh, probe would be mounted on the, on the surface itself. In the case study that I'm going to talk about is uh, this industrial blower was operating at low efficiency and it was replaced with a blower that operated at 75 efficiency and we're going to be doing a calculation next for that one. But interestingly, when they, during the, uh, in the case study, during the old blower, um, during the teardown, it was discovered that the fibrous liner here, which was upstream of the impeller, had torn loose and actually was trapped or ingested into the propeller and was causing this low efficiency operation. So um, had there been an efficiency measurement on this prior to this, um, it would have pointed out that something drastically had changed and, and you could then go in and, and fix the problem without perhaps replacing the entire unit. So by replacing the blower uh, and increasing the efficiency, now this is, they, they put a new one in, 
uh, from 41 to 75 per, uh, percent efficiency, how much cost savings is realized in a month? And here we're going to assume that we're running for 672 hours. The, uh, the blower motor is drawing uh, 375 kilowatts. And we're going to assume that the motor efficiency is nearly one, which is, is pretty good because motors generally range to 98, 97% efficiency. And the energy costs are about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So running the new blower at 75% efficiency, uh, multiplying these numbers together would give us a cost of $33,000 uh, roughly per month to operate it. With the old blower operating, the cost is, say, at efficiency of 0.41, 41 percent, the cost would be $61,000. So the cost savings on this blower going from the old one to the new one is pretty impressive, $28,000 per month. So at that rate, the, the potential energy savings justify the, the investment of the new blower. Uh, but we could have also caught that with the putting the efficiency kit on the old blower and then trying to, trying to solve the problem with why the efficiency was so low. So to wind this up, uh, the takeaways from what I'm pre presenting at the seminar is most operators do not know if their blower fan is operating at its best efficiency point. Uh, even moderate improvements in efficiency, five to 10%, can result in saving thousands of dollars in, in annual cost savings. Uh, KCF's real time history of the fan blower duty cycle can also identify times when the unit is running when not needed. And that's actually quite common a lot where the fan is simply running and the blower is running and it's, uh, it's not required. So in high asset blowers, say five to one megawatt, the return on investments for installing KCF's efficiency kit can be realized in a few months. And that's an important takeaway that I wanted to, to present to you in this uh, very quick um, little presentation on saving energy by measuring blower efficiency. And with that, I'm going to move on. Uh, thanks for listening to this webinar. And we have time for questions. And I just point out if, if you want more details on this efficiency kit and its installations, please contact me directly, Gary Koopman at kcftech.com or at our sales team, just sales at kcf.com or call this number and you'll have a person you can talk to. And also, um, Cassie has asked me to introduce uh, next KCF's next webinar on June 10th uh, at 12 noon, how remote monitoring has changed given the impact of COVID-19. And so with that, I'm going to uh, ask Cassie if uh, are there are any questions from the group. Are you, are, there, are you there, Cassie? Yes, I am. Thanks so much um, for your presentation, Dr. Koopman. Um, and I do have some questions here. Uh, so the first one is, can the efficiency kit be shared between blowers? Uh, the answer is, of course, um, the it's it, it's just like any other system where if you uh, have many many blowers side by side you could move from one to the other and uh, of course that's kind of going against the idea of remote sensing but it is possible and if you w didn't want to do that we would advise not to move the the transducers themselves but simply the the sensors that go with it and that would be an easy electrical connection rather than having to go through the me mechanical uh, replacements going from one point to another but we're, we're going to try and keep the costs down low enough so that we can justify putting several of these uh, on, on your blowers so that you will have a continuous monitoring of all blowers at the same time. Did that answer your question, Casey or Cassie? I, I hope so. Absolutely, sure. Um, okay. So um, the next one that came in is, how vulnerable is the kit's temperature probe to gases containing contaminants, like paint, for example? Uh, very good question. So on the, on the probe itself, um, we have been thinking about how to do this. So we have a, a specialty probe that has a bend in it that actually kind of looks like a pitot tube, but it's a it's pitot tube that's uh, pointing in the wrong direction. 
So uh, the, the tube allows communication for the pressure to get to the uh, pressure transducer. And also there's a, a thermistor on the inside of that probe that would be measuring the temperature of the probe itself, uh, which is the going to be the air temperature. So the, the thermistor is protected. Um, and so in terms of paint buildup, we think it's going to minimize uh, the, the problem by uh, facing this tube downstream so that the paint or whatever contaminants are in it won't be uh, drawn into the tube itself. Thank you. Um, so we have another one that came in. Um, in the meantime, uh, is the best way to reduce flow to use a VFD rather than dampening? And are there concerns with resonance when slowing down a fan or blower? Well, uh, as I, I, I try to show with the, the fan curve or the blower curve that uh, in terms of, of saving energy, the best solution is to use a variable speed drive uh, because when you do uh, control the speed with a blow with a uh, louver, uh, you do uh, introduce friction into your system operation, and that's going to be anytime you bring in something like a resistance, you're going to be wasting energy uh, with the flow itself because you're generating turbulence, and and so you're, you're kind of losing uh, the efficiency of the system. So a, a variable speed drive uh, is much more preferable because there you can uh, reduce the flow rate, reduce the power into the motor, and it's just more, more cost effective. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so a one final one that we had uh, come in is when a blower is observed, to be operating below its best efficiency point. What are the next steps that should be taken? Yeah, that's uh, well, uh, once we've identified the problem, uh, then we would bring in on our optimization team and begin to look at the system itself. And we, we, we saw the system curve. And uh, if the, well, there's, there's many ways to solve the problem. Uh, it could be the blower itself, as we saw earlier. It could be a, uh, a broken or a missing fan blade or a, a blower impeller blade or uh, dirt buildup, all, all these kinds of things. So we, the next stage would say bring in some experts, and we have those at KCF that would allow us to investigate the, the, the operating conditions and make recommendations on how to improve things. So it might be readjusting the louvers. Many times uh, people adjust the louvers without really realizing what, what they're doing to the, the whole system. So uh, so I would say call in the experts and we can, we can fix it for you. Excellent. Uh, thanks so much um, for your time, Dr. Koopman. Um, if you have any questions that we were not able uh, to answer at this time, please reach out to us and we will make sure that we get those answers to you. I want to uh, thank everyone for your thoughtful participation today, and we'll send a follow-up email with the link for registration to our next event and the session's recording um, afterwards. So there's also a brief survey that we included, and we'd really appreciate your feedback if you have a moment to fill it out. And be sure to follow along with KCF on our social media pages for uh, more event announcements and updates. Okay. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Cassie, and, and thank you everyone for listening and have a good day.